I'm Rick Jarrow, and I'm here to talk to you about creating the work you love. You know, there have been arguments about should the stadiums have been built for the World Cup and the Olympics, and it'll help the economy, and it'll hurt the economy. And the thing is, we can talk about them till the end of time. What I want to know is, what can you do, what can I do to create self-sustaining work that not only feeds our pocketbooks, but feeds our souls in this unbelievable, crazy economy that we live in. And in the book, Creating the Work You Love, which I'm happy to say will be published in Brazil uh, very shortly, we talk about seven steps that you can take if you're really serious about manifesting sanity, clarity, consciousness in your work and in the world. And the first and arguably most important one is coming from a place of abundance instead of a place of scarcity. Scarcity says, I'm not good enough, there's not enough money, something's wrong with me, and something's wrong with them. And we go throughout our whole lives blaming them or feeling that we're inadequate. And the reason that we do that is because society consciously conditions you to feel scarce so you don't break the bubble and you can be a good soldier. So the way to get out of that is to consciously cultivate a sense of abundance. Abundance says, I was perfect the day I was born. I'm good enough. There's a place for me in this world just being who I am. I don't have to bend myself out of shape in order to fit into an industry or a profession. This takes courage, but this gives you so much energy and so much power because you get up in the morning and you feel, wow, like the sun, I'm shining. No, ooh, here we go again. Uh, that's what we want in our work. Wow, you know, it feels so good to be alive. And that moves into the, the second step, which by the way, I correlated, in case anyone's interested, with the chakra system, uh, really to point out that Aligned work begins in the body. It's not enough to think it. It's got to sink into your body. And the second step is passion. Passion is what you care about enough that you're willing to sacrifice for it. Think about that. It's not just, wow, that's cool. But passion is, I, this means so much to me that I'll put in the extra hour. I'll wait till it becomes perfect. I'm really going to do it. And it would be great if we were Mozart and we knew when we were three years old what we wanted to do with our life. But most of us don't have that kind of karma. So how do you get that passion? And one way is going down into the roots of your family history and sorting out, you know, the different messages you receive growing up, you know. You should be this, you can be a nurse, you can't do this, you should do that. And really getting to the bottom of what fuels your fire. You know, what gives you the energy to break through the, the inertia that most people call daily life. What most people are living is a low-grade depression. Is that what you want to live? If not, you go through abundance and passion. And then, and only then, does the will come in. The third chakra, or the will, constellates around your ability to choose what is right for you in a particular moment. And that there's a science to it. Instead of thinking about what do I want to do for the rest of my life, what is my life mission, all these grandiose things, I ask you, what is the one thing that if you got it done in the next six months, you really feel good about yourself? In other words, what's important now now here's where life alignment comes in what's important now may not be your work it may be a relationship it may be your health it may be where to live it may be taking care of someone in your family but if you have the courage to focus on what's important now the rest of your life will align with it i had a gentleman in one of my workshops who for nine years had been a peace activist I don't know how you get paid for being a peace activist, but he did. But he was at the stage, what do I want to do now? What's up? What's important now? And he, he realized that what was important for him was his son. His son was 13 years old. He's going to be out of the house soon. He'd been traveling around the world. He said, what's important now for me is to be in a relationship with my son. Okay. 
He was offered a job as a social worker, nine to five, but around the corner from where he lives. The ego says, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a great peace activist. How could I do nine to five social work? But the alignment was, this is going to allow me to spend the time with my son. The power of choice and focus in this third chakra, in this place of clarity, is that you understand that no choice of yours is forever. If you do now what you really want to do now, the thing that you're thinking about then has a better chance of coming in. Uh, the next place we move to is the heart. Uh, the heart is a reflection or a, um, yeah, it's, it's a reflection of the marketplace. Can you believe that? That it is through the heart that you could interact with the marketplace, not as a predator, but as a contributor. And that is what makes creating the work you love different than a corporate career seminar. It's not enough just to get a job you like and make money. Anybody can do that. What's enough is to feel that you're making a contribution, to feel that your life has some meaning, to feel that there are people out there who are receiving the goodness of your heart. And so when you learn to give and receive, when you learn to allow the full force of Shakti, of the universe, to flow through you, but also to receive money, to receive compliments. You, you go into this community of manifestation. As a teacher of mine once said in India, money is round to keep it rolling. So why not? Then, when you're really synced in, you could move into the higher reaches of creativity. You can allow the guidance of the universe to guide not just your spiritual decisions, but your work decisions. And ultimately, ultimately, we can let all of this go and just have a good time doing what we're doing, because that's why we were here to share and enjoy the love of being alive and making our work part of that, not making our work some heavy cross that we carry through life. It's not necessary, it's not worth it, and we can all do better. Creating the work you love.